Jen friends, I'm Major Gaurawari and you're watching the Janaka Dialogues English. Because India is the only country in the Indo-Pacific which is willing to militarily take on China. Which has taken on China militarily twice in the past. We had a long war in 62. A mob doesn't have any brains, you know, a mob will go, it'll burn cars, it'll, it'll burn shops, it will burn markets, it will burn residential apartments. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. You know that the Prime Minister of India is shortly visiting the United States of America on a state visit. And uh, this is a matter of great honor. And uh, you know, while the Prime Minister has visited the US, this is his first state visit and there are various things that happen in a state visit, which is not a, a you know, a normal regular visit of any head of state. So. Uh, what is what is happening is that uh, when Prime Minister Modi visits before that, the U.S. Congressional Committee on the Strategic Competition between U.S. and the Chinese Communist Party has recommended. I'm just I'm just reading this out and then I'll explain the pros and the cons of this. They said winning the strategic competition with the Chinese Communist Party and ensuring the security of Taiwan demands that the United States strengthen ties with the allies and security partners, including India, including India. NATO plus security arrangements would build upon the U.S. and India's close partnership to strengthen global security and deter the aggression of the CCP across the Indo-Pacific region. So essentially, what the US is doing is playing on the India-China rivalry. Uh, also, because India is the only country in the Indo-Pacific which is willing to militarily take on China, which has taken on China militarily twice in the past. We had a long war in 62, we had a short war, a localized conflict in Nathula in 1967. And of course, who can forget Galwan and other small skirmishes and essentially, uh, essentially, you know, not fought with ammunition and weapons, but with clubs and sticks in the 21st century. Uh, but uh, it happened. And so India is the only country that has shown the appetite to take on China militarily. Now, there are two, three things. What does this NATO plus entail or what is uh, membership of NATO entails. So NATO essentially there are a lot of countries that are NATO plus including Israel, including other countries. But the problem here is that will it, if India decides to become a member of this because they are offering it, if India decides to become a member, does India forego its strategic autonomy? This is the biggest concern for an analyst like me. The biggest concern. Does India forego strategic autonomy? Because when you become part of the group, then your interest becomes subservient to the interests of the group, right? Uh, so if any country is a member of the NATO, they will have to follow NATO policies. So if India becomes a member of NATO or NATO plus, as they like to say. Now, uh, let me define this further, you know, just to explain it properly uh, through this article. Uh, and uh, what, what they are saying is that they want India because they know that the conflict with China is coming and in so many other things, not just militarily, but also economically and they want to corner China and they feel that India is the best country to do that. So it says while the North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO is a 31 member alliance with 29 European nations and two American, which is US and Canada, the NATO plus currently NATO plus five is a security arrangement that brings together NATO and five aligned nations, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Israel and South Korea to boost global defense cooperation. Now, let us understand one thing, ladies and gentlemen. NATO is a military grouping, Quad is not, AUKUS is a military grouping. So do you want to get into a military grouping? Where does that leave India vis-a-vis -vis its relationship with Russia, right? If, you know, they are looking at India, the NATO countries and the US are looking at India uh, as far as the military confrontation is concerned from a narrow prism of uh, a confrontation with China. That is the lens, you know, because NATO is a military grouping, which is why they're looking at it. NATO specifically is looking at it from the prism or the lens of a defense uh, deal, a defense tie-up with India, in which there are other countries like Australia, like, like New Zealand, like Israel, like uh, South Korea, etc. And India becomes a NATO plus five or plus now, if India agrees, is going to be a plus six. And NATO plus essentially means that we are a group. And so what does it mean if, if China attacks India? 
is it equal to China attacking the United States of America? Because that is what you have for the NATO countries. I'm not sure. I don't know whether NATO plus gets the same facilities as NATO, number one. Number two, I think and it is my personal opinion that India should keep away from all these things. There is a very famous saying, you know, uh, beware of Greeks carrying gifts. And this goes to the time of, uh, you know, the Helen of Troy and uh, that battle, you know, where they send this send this wooden horse. I don't know if you're aware, but if you've read the story, but they send a wooden horse inside and inside were Greek soldiers and they entered the city of Troy and uh, there was a fight and there was this thing and Achilles was leading the Greek forces, etc. So long story, ancient story. But uh, so they have a saying, beware of Greeks carrying gifts, beware of the Americans carrying gifts. Whenever America has wanted to do good to a country, Whichever country and America has done this with the best of intentions at heart. I'm not doubting American intentions. I'm doubting American action. So whenever America has done anything with the best of intentions, it has destroyed that country completely. You shake hands with the Americans, you're dead. I mean, this is my personal belief. And uh, I'm, I'm not saying it out of, uh, uh, you know, any, any uh, sense of uh, hatred because there is none. I'm a deep, deep admirer of the United States of America. It's people, it's entrepreneurship, it's scientific temper, it's progress, it's defense prowess. I'm a huge fan of most thing Americans. It is just their foreign policy that I don't understand. You know, uh, so America says NATO plus. Where does that leave us with Russia? Because Russia has been a trusted partner. Today, Russia is not able to supply us with the weapons and ammunition simply because Russia is caught in a conflict with Ukraine. But this war will end this year or the next or the year after that. One day this war will end. Then what? Russia is geographically closer to us than the United States of America. The Russians have stood with us through thick and thin in 1971 war. And otherwise also the Russians have always stood with the Indians. And look at where those countries are with whom America stood. America stood with Afghanistan. America stood with Iraq. America stood with... Uh, Latin America, America stood with Korea, resulting in, you know, two countries, North and South Korea. America stood with so many countries. And, uh, and those countries are now in a pit of misery because America stood with them. So, I like all things American. I can't understand American foreign policy. I can't understand American politics. So, uh, I think India needs to... Uh, keep away from this. This is what my what my uh, initial reaction is. Let's see what they offer us and let's see how best we can take advantage of this. But uh, even if there are advantages, I think India should keep distance from the Americans regarding this. Now, uh, Western intelligence report says that uh, a state-sponsored Chinese hacking group has been spying on a wide range of U.S. critical infrastructure organizations from telecommunications to transportation hubs, Western intelligence agencies and Microsoft. You know, they said on Wednesday, the espionage also targeted U.S. island territory of Guam, home to strategically important American military bases. Microsoft said in a report, adding that mitigating this attack could be challenging. Uh, Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson Mao Ning, his name is actually Mao Ning. Could have been moaning, moaning, said on Thursday that hacking allegations were a collective disinformation campaign from the Five Eyes countries, a reference to the intelligence sharing group of countries made up of the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia and the UK. Okay, so essentially China, the Chinese economy has grown on two principles. Number one is contract manufacturing and number two is intellectual property theft. China has nothing. China has no thinking prowess. Uh, China has nothing. China can copy very well and China can steal very well. Uh, again, not coming from a place of hatred. I've been to China many times. I've observed how the Chinese work. They're masters at copying. They're masters at copying. They're masters at stealing, uh, you know, scientific papers, scientific formulae. That is what the Chinese do best. What I'm trying to say here is that, you know, Chinese spying is not new. China has been spying for decades on the Western countries. It is just that they hide behind democracy in the West. So uh, what they do uh, very effectively is that uh, they also play the victim card very well, the Chinese. 
So if a Chinese a spy is caught in, in the United States of America, they start playing victim that, oh, I'm Asian and I have Asian features and therefore the police has caught me and, you know, stuff like that. So this is what the Chinese are experts at doing. And they've stolen American technology. America has been very careless with this technology because America has these, you know, this ocean of scientific brilliance. It's not a river or a sea, it's an ocean of scientific brilliance, but they're extremely careless uh, with the security and that is how China has grown. So China has been spying. China sent out those weather balloons also. If you remember recently, China keeps on doing that. And the only way to contain it is that you hack the Chinese in response. The Chinese have never gotten a response from the Americans. You know, they have never been at the receiving end. They're only attacking, attacking. Nobody has attacked China. When I say attack, I'm saying that cyber infrastructure, that IT infrastructure. They need to come under massive attacks from all directions. That will teach the Chinese a lesson, but that is not happening anytime soon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, you see, Imran Khan earlier used to say that I will not talk to the government, meaning the Shahbaz Sharif government. I'm not going to talk to this government. This, this uh, government is full of thieves and robbers and bandits, and I will not talk to that government. And this government, Shahbaz Sharif's government, with folded hands had been requesting Imran Khan to talk for the past one year. For the past one year, they've been saying, talk to us, let us resolve this issue because it's not doing our country any good. It's not doing Pakistan any good. Let's talk. Imran Khan said, no, absolutely not. I will not talk to you. But today, when most of his leadership has quit and Imran Khan finds himself alone, what does Imran Khan do as a response? He creates a small group, a negotiating group, which he says will talk to various people, including the army, including the government. Now he's created this group. Now there are two problems with this group. The first problem is that the people of the group are not there. Many of them are in hiding. Some of them are in jail. They're not there to do the talking. And number two, the government says, the government of Pakistan says that we wanted to talk to you for a year, but you said no. Now after May 9th, when your people started attacking military installations, we declare you terrorists and we don't talk to terrorists. So Imran, you know, Imran Khan's stock has plummeted since the 9th of May. And this is something that Imran Khan's followers should not have done. I don't buy this argument that Imran Khan did not know what was going on or the PTI people did not know what was going on. This was not a, this was not a, you know, a natural uprising, if I may say that. This was carefully calibrated because they selected strategic targets. A mob doesn't have any brains, you know, a mob will go, it will burn cars, it will it'll burn shops, it will burn markets, it will burn residential apartments, it will harm random people on the road because then that mob mentality sets in. These guys were not a mob. They knew exactly where they were going. They knew that they had to go to the core commander's house. They went to the core commander's house. They knew they had to go to GHQ Rawalpindi. They went to GHQ Rawalpindi. This mob knew Sargoda Air Base. They knew Quetta Air Base. This mob knew the ISI office in Faisalabad. These were strategic targets, you know, All India Radio Pakistan. Their building was burnt to cinders. This was not a mob, you know, on 9th of May. I, as an Indian analyst, whatever images I've seen on television, whatever I've read from Pakistani media, I'm not talking about Indian media, from Pakistani media, to a man with half a brain, it's absolutely clear, as clear as day, that this, what happened in Pakistan, was not some mob which worked out of or which which reacted out of rage that our leader has been put in prison and put in jail and he's been arrested and we are very upset. No, this mob, this entire mob action was very well thought through. And I think I would not be wrong if I said that this was very akin to enemy action. I mean, I tweeted and the Pakistanis were not too happy. They never too happy with me. But I tweeted that we have had four wars. We have fought four wars with Pakistan. And I don't think the GHQ was attacked. And I don't think our core commander's residence was invaded. I don't think that had ever happened. Imran Khan did what the Indian army did not. We did not attack homes. Imran Khan attacked homes. And that is why today, nobody is willing to talk to Imran Khan. Let's see what happens in Pakistan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, may the best team win. Today is uh, the IPL final. Today is also the inauguration of the parliament. By the time you see this video, the parliament would have been inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. Uh, we wish 
our countrymen the very best. It's a lovely new beginning and uh, all the best and may the best team win today's IPL final. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please press like, subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.